Think about that. Think about it. My ups, my downs, my ins, my outs, my good days, my bad days. Things wasn't so well. It was nobody but the Lord. Amen. Can anybody witness to that? Come on. Come on. I want to testify. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. When I was in trouble, in trouble. Oh God, you came to my rescue. You came to, you came to my rescue. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Amen. You know, even though all of us have not come through the same things, we certainly have to conclude together the same thing. Amen. It was nobody but the Lord. I might have been on the north side of town. You might have been on the south side of town. But it was nobody but the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give our praise team some love come on amen 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 we certainly are grateful to god and obedience to god our our father jesus christ our lord and our savior recognizing the presence and power of the holy spirit he is in this place and he is at work amen we thank god for uh, our scripture reading our prayer amen and our praise and your participation. We, we don't have to go to church. We get to come to church. Amen. Amen. I'm glad about that. How about you? Mm -hmm. Amen. In certain places of this country, people are at a standstill. Some can't move because of torrentous rains and downpours. There are floods. Acapulco is still trying to clean up and still finding bodies. There are bombs going off. People are hiding and fighting for their life in Gaza and throughout our, our um, uh, Israel area, Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Uh, earthquakes. Um, people are re trying to recover and dig out their loved ones from earthquakes. Amen. Amen. There's freezing north of us. Amen. We're just getting a little rain and a little a little temperature drop. Amen. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody Amen. But the Lord. And so we certainly want to pray for all of those circumstances around us and around this country. Um, but we, we we got the right weather. It's November. It's supposed to be getting cold. All right. <laughs> Amen. Give us a chance to pull out our our winter clothes. Amen. Yeah. And give the give the environment a chance to to do its e eco uh, thing. Amen. Killing off certain germs and God is in charge, y'all. Amen. Even while it look like things are going uh, in a different way, we must remember as believers that God is in charge. Amen. It is nobody but the Lord. Amen. Amen. With respect to. Uh, Dr. Matthew Davis and Sister Davis in their absence to all of the officers and members of the New Beginning Church. We're certainly grateful to God for this second Sunday of November. Amen. Happy November, y'all. 
We on our way to the end of the year. Amen. By the time we blink our eyes, we'll be getting ready for New Year's. <laughs> Amen. And so we certainly want to thank God Amen. and praise God for bringing us um, to, to the month of November. Amen. Amen. And so we, we're glad to be here with you. Uh, I think many of you know how much I love Pastor Davis and Sister Davis and you, New Beginnings. Amen. Amen. And uh, I've been saying to Pastor Davis, just as soon as I line some ducks up in the rows, I want to come this way. The last time I was with you, I weren't by myself. Uh, well, the last two times I brought a friend some months ago. Amen. And um, this is the anniversary uh, almost for when my wife passed away last last December, and so um, I certainly need your prayers. Amen. Amen. It would have been my mother's birthday today. Amen. She would be making 85. Amen. So there is a plethora of things going on in my head and in my heart, uh, Brother Myers, but I'm thankful to God because it's been nobody, nobody but the Lord. Amen. How about you? You may have some memorable moments, some things going across your mind and in your heart, but certainly we are reminded of how good God is to us. Amen. And so we certainly want to thank God. I want to ask you to pray for us as we journey to the book of Jeremiah. There's an interesting, amen, uh, story pericope between the book of Jeremiah or contrast between uh, Jeremiah of the 31st chapter and um, for our time wise I want to read verses 31 through 34 but when you get a chance read that whole chapter amen there's some some interesting things going on but I want you um, to get the gist of of, of it 31 I'm reading the ESV version and then we will go over to James the first chapter so hold those two spots amen Jeremiah 31 at 31 says behold the days are coming declares the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people and no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and his neighbor uh, each his brother saying know the Lord for they shall all know me for the least of them to the greatest declares the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more amen go with me now to James amen it's right after the book of Hebrews James the first chapter amen listen at James James a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ and to the 12 tribes uh, in uh, the dispersion. Greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you like wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all uh, without reproach. And it will be given him. But let him ask in faith 
not in doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose uh, that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Amen. Let me stop there. May God bless the reading of his word, your reverence to stand for his word, and it becomes ours to obey his word. Amen. I want to share with you from, uh, from a thought, stop crying and start counting. Amen. 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 You're going to pray for me, aren't you? Stop crying and start counting. Won't you look over at your neighbor who you're sitting with in worship this morning and say to them, brother, sister, stop crying and start counting. Amen. 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 I, I firmly believe in this message for, for several reasons because, first of all, God has spoken to me these words as I have shared some tidbits of where my thought and where my heart is today. Amen. And I certainly uh, know where my mother is. I know where my wife is. They're in the presence of the Lord. And so as a believer, if I know that, I need to stop crying. And start counting. Amen. You, you, you get where I'm going? Amen. Uh, here we are. It is amazing how quickly, brothers and sisters, we, we are to forget. Or we ignore how and why we find ourselves in crisis after crisis. And then when we forget, we find ourselves playing the blame game. Even with God. We look for reasons to say to God, but if I was uh, talking with a young person the other day and I said, uh, you know, Lou Ross. And she's like, I ain't never heard of Lou Ross. I said he was a blues singer and I, I, I didn't pay attention to the fact I was talking to somebody young. And he's like, I ain't never heard of you. Girl. I say, well, Google it. Y'all Google everything else. <laughs> Google Lou Ross. I say that when you Google him, he sung a song, If I Coulda, Woulda, Shoulda. Right. Now, y'all don't sit up and act like y'all been in church all y'all life. Y'all know it? Yeah. If I Coulda, Woulda, Shoulda, that's what fo some folks say. And so that young person was giving me a bunch of ifs and if I coulda and if I woulda and all of that. And I was like, you sound like Lou Ross. <laughs> Saying this song, I'm like, who is that? And so... I gave them a little history lesson on that. And so many people, so many believers play the blame game and say, well, God, if you would have did this, then I wouldn't have did that. Or maybe if you would have, you, you know, that's a blame game. That's a blame game. And so we need to be, we need to be real careful about that. And while we are waddling and walking and living uh, we even become crippled in this blame game. We become uh, crushed uh, and even unto the point of crying. Amen. Uh, even now, uh, as I'm sitting around and I was talking to Brother Wheelock and I was saying to him, I, I, even when I try to think of reasons to think about uh, Denise, my wife, to try to feel a reason to, to stir up some tears. God said, mm -mm. <laughs> no. He said, remember, I gave you 35 years with her you didn't deserve. Somebody going to get that on their way out the door. And, and it was a happy, healthy marriage. And if anybody in here know what healthy, happy mean, it don't mean perfect. It means happy, happy, healthy, yeah. workable. Yeah. Two folk who got along. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I was sitting with uh, my oldest brother and his wife, 
yesterday repairing their computer and uh I asked them, I said, y'all all right? They said, yeah, we about as good as we going to get. <laughs> he said, when we have a problem, they have a fireplace. They say, when we have a problem, we talk about it until we agree to disagree. All right. And then we take it and put it on top of the fireplace. All right. And when we're sitting and having uh, another round table, we pull it off the fireplace and say, you know, we were talking about this last week, and so let's talk about it again. You say, so we're we, we not going to let any circumstance get in the way, because ain't nobody, he's, my brother say, ain't nobody in here sleeping on the couch. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's for visitors. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So where are you? Where are you right now? Are you... Are you looking for something to cry about? Well, this particular pericope in Jeremiah invites us to, to peep in on circumstances that the children of Israel was going through. And for many of us, we know that Jeremiah has been pinned as the weeping prophet. Yeah. He's yeah. a very sincere young man. And God called him in the midst of while his own people, the, own, the people of Israel, were making wrong decisions, bad decisions, and God had been chastising them. And Jeremiah was a very, very young man, yes, and with respect and reverence and regards to um, the people that he was around, he was much younger than many of them. And so when God called him to be a prophet and to speak to the people, he was like, oh, God, I don't want to want to have to talk to these folk. These folk grown. They ain't going to listen to me. I ain't, I'm just a child. They're not going to put up with me talking. And, and God told Jeremiah, I got you. I got you. If I, if I called you, I got you. Yeah, I'm putting a word in you. I'm putting a word before you. And all you got to do is say what I'm telling you to say. Whatever I tell you to write down, write it down and stick with your notes and read it to them. And so several times they really uh, handled Jeremiah in an unfair way. So much so that it was Jeremiah who we hear all the time uh, decided to go back home after he had spoken to the people of God, his own people. And Jeremiah went home and said, I ain't talking no more. I ain't speaking no more to him. He's called the weeping prophet. He cries and cries and cries. And God tells him each time, stop that crying. <laughs> Stop that crying, Jeremiah, until he sat at home saying he wasn't. It, it dealt with Jeremiah. It, 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 it put Jeremiah in almost uh, a, a, a situation of pressure or depression, um, so to speak, because he knew that God told him to speak to the people. He knew uh, that what he said to the people was the word of God. It was the truth. And uh, yet they didn't want to hear it. And God said to him, no, you're going to have to go tell them again. He was like, I don't want to, I don't want to go tell them again. God said, stop crying and just do uh, what I'm telling you to do. And so, my brothers and sisters, it's real important um, that you and I take a retrospective look. Because so many times uh, we look out and we look parallel around us. We look at what we're handling and what we're dealing with, what's, what's on ground level, what's, what's on eye level. We look at circumstances all around us and we spend so much time looking at things that is level to our eye and level to our head and level to our hearts. And we deal with it different ways and we never spend time looking up. Somebody gonna get that on their way home. We must spend more time looking up than looking out because the, the uplook is always bright. The outlook is always dark. You, you don't have to look far to see problems. You don't have to look far to see situations. Amen. You don't, you don't have to. You can just turn on the news. Amen. I hadn't seen uh, local news, and I'm a big fan of local news because I like to keep up with what's going on around the corner from me. Uh, some things in, in Egypt, uh, we had to shut down a trip this month uh, to the Holy Land because of what's going on. I'm not mad about that. I'm disturbed about what's going on 
But I'm not mad about canceling the trip because if I would have got over there, I wouldn't have been able to do nothing about it. You, you know, matter of fact, I would have been in the way. Being a U.S. citizen, they could have easily used me as a pawn in the plot. Uh, of all of that stuff and so I'm praying about that I'm praying for for the people that are innocently uh, in a line of fire uh, but but when I watch local news and see what's going on on the north side the east side I could do something about that I could go somewhere and help a brother on the other side of town I could go somewhere and help a sister on the other side of town amen but we spend so much time looking at these things, we, we seem to forget that God is still sitting high and looking low. That God is still in control. Can I get a witness? Brothers and sisters, it's firmly important for us to understand that we need to know that Satan is busy. He never fights fair. He never ease up and quit he stays on his job even if he got you down on the ground he gonna still try to stomp and kick on you he just does not fight fair he he looks to seek to to steal kill and destroy can I get a witness uh, who has helped us uh, in these times that we are faced with nobody but you Lord <laughs> Nobody but you. And so it becomes ours to think about, think about how we are internalizing, how, how we are analyzing, how we are really looking at the circumstances of life that's not only going on at our address, but what's, what's going on around us. I was uh, sharing um, at, a, at a home last week um, that we were doing some repairs on uh, and um, uh, I noticed I did not have um, the tools. I hadn't put the tools in the tool bag that I needed. And so I asked the customer, I said, do you have such, such tools or such, such? It's like, no, I don't have nothing like that. I said, well, what about your neighbor? And they said, I don't know any of my neighbors. I said, how long you been here? She said, she's been staying there 16 years. I said, and you don't know none of your neighbors? Wow. I hope I'm helping somebody here. I mean, you, 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 don't, you don't know the one to the left, to the right, wow. directly across the street. You, know, you, you don't even know the nosy one. Yeah. <laughs> the one that see you going out every day and coming in every day. You don't, you don't even know them. You got a right to know the nosy one. Since they want to look at everything and watch everything, you ought to at least say, say hi. Yeah. I was on a plane uh, two weeks ago uh, on my way to uh, Central America prepping for some missionary work. And uh, a lady sat next to me. I was in the middle, and she sat next to me. And um, uh, I kind of fixed the seatbelt so she wouldn't sit on it. And she sat down and got herself all prepared, tucked her bags underneath, and and all of that, and then uh, start trying to put a seatbelt on. And she was having terrible trouble trying to put a seatbelt on. And I mean, she was having a hard time with it. She couldn't get it. And she looked over at me and she said, I, it's something wrong with this thing. I can't put this thing on. I say, that's your problem. You don't even want to speak to nobody and you sit next to me. <laughs> yeah, y'all can look at me funny if y'all want to. I told her, that's your problem. I say, how you doing? She said, I ain't doing too good because I can't get the seatbelt on. I say, say hi, and I will fix your seatbelt for you. <laughs> Amen. She said, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. My seatbelt on. <laughs> and she said, I'm sorry. I said, okay, let me hook it up for you. And I hooked it up. She was like, what was wrong with it? I said, I'm not a seatbelt analyzer, but it snapped for me. You all right now? She said, yes, sir. I said, okay. And so uh, she ain't said nothing else after that, bro. The whole flight all the way through. Then they passed out uh, the, the, um, the uh, forms you have to fill out when you get to foreign places. And uh, I'm sitting next to two people, and neither of them have a pen. And you got to fill out forms. And so I took my time filling out my form. <laughs> 
Amen. I already knew they needed my pen. Because they don't pass our pens on the plane. They barely pass our peanuts now. And uh, so I just waited. And I looked over at her. I said, you need to say something. You need to borrow my pen, don't you? She said, yes, I do. I said, okay, now ask me. We can't fly across the globe and sit next to each other and something can happen and you don't want to speak to somebody. I'm, I'm helping somebody already. A amen. 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 I flew some years ago. I, I uh, had a chance to be upgraded and put in um, first class and uh, we sitting in first class and a senior lady came on the plane and couldn't grab a suitcase up to put it over and I popped right up, grabbed the suitcase, put it up and she was standing there for a minute struggling with it and I popped right up. I said, well, let me get that for you. I put it up and um, she was sitting over to the window on my aisle and we began uh, talking and uh, I kind of said a, a little bit on first lady, nobody Nobody has seen this sister trying to get a suitcase up. And so I sat there with her, and uh, we talked, and she went to uh, Central America for two weeks and ended up being there for three months. Her son uh, is the CEO of one of the biggest hotels there, and uh, he wanted his mama to stay a little while longer with him. And while she was there, she ended up buying a lot more stuff, and that's why her luggage was so much more heavier. And uh, by the time that flight was over, I knew her son's name was Scott. I knew his phone number. I knew where he was. Amen. And as soon as I had to go back to Belize, I called Scott. And Scott said, you must be that young man that met my mama on the plane. I said, yes, sir. And your mama told you to hook me up. Somebody going to get that on their way out of here. Amen. It's something about when you know the son. When you know the mama. Amen. And so what I'm saying is that so many times we spend so much time dealing with our own um, problems, we can't see the blessings that are all around us. And Jeremiah was trying to speak to these people. We can, we can never find our way, brothers and sisters, back to God if we continue to keep crying and looking at the circumstances that are around us. Can I get a witness? Amen. My brothers and sisters, there is evidence laying all around us uh, that we have uh, left God and got our eyes focused on the wrong stuff. I, I don't know about you, but I've been, I've been in church all my life, but I've been saved since, since 1984. I was called in 19. 85 to preach amen and so uh, I have seen the goodness of God how about you amen. I have seen the goodness of God in 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 all of these since my eyes have really been open I was in church but my eyes wasn't open I sung in the choir but my eyes wasn't open amen I've done other areas of ministry in the church coming up but my eyes were not open until I got to know Jesus in a personal way. And my eyes became open. My vision became clearer. Amen. And, and so when I try to, uh, when I evaluate uh, what a little COVID done for from 2019 to even up to 2023, it still does not outweigh the good of God. And, and let me help somebody, even in the midst of COVID, you and I are still here. I wish somebody hear me. Amen. I, I think I did over 50 funerals uh, between uh, 2019 and, and even up to today because people are still dying from, from COVID. Amen. And people were dying in Houston, Texas. Amen. Amen. 5,000 a month right here. And here, you and I are sitting up in here in church in November 23. We are part of the remnant. Amen. Uh, just as Jeremiah had a remnant 
that he was speaking to and he was talking to and he was trying to share with them that one of the reasons why uh, they were going through the problems they were going through, it was not because God wasn't good. It was because they were making bad decisions. Talk back to me, somebody. Amen. So many times we look for reasons to blame God for our own sins. Help me, somebody. Amen. But it will do us well uh, to come to grips with our own shortcoming. I mean, God is already waiting on the other side of forgiveness, and we spend time having a pity party on this side of our sins. Talk back to me. But just to suit, you do know he's a God who forgives. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is confess your faults. Yes, sir. He's faithful and just to forgive and to yeah. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. I mean, God is waiting, yeah. amen, with a bucket of mercies. He's waiting with a tub of grace. He wants to wash us and cleanse us and stand us back up and say, now go on. Amen. I, I never should forget. I remember mama used to whip us and we would still be back in the room going, <laughs> you know, crying and looking at the whips. And, and every now and then my mama would come through there through the hallway and she'd say, you better stop that before I give you something else to cry about. So she'd say, I, ain't, I didn't whip you as bad as I could have with somebody hear me. <laughs> Amen. And so is it like God. I say, so is it like God? I was sharing with someone who was having prayer with me uh, a few days ago, and and uh, uh, I found myself moving from uh, what we were talking about to saying, but he still ain't. He still, God still has not fired me. God still has not killed me. I wish somebody hear me. I got a I got a plethora of 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 of, of issues that that God could have fired me. How about you? He could have, he could have, he could have went past your address. Amen. He could have ignored your emails. I mean, your emails. He could have ignored your prayers. He could have moved on to the next house. Why is he still blessing your house, your family, your circumstances, your job? You got a job. Somebody was talking the other day, got a car and a job. I say, you got a car and a job. Shut up. Stop crying and start counting. I wish I had a witness here. And so many times we spend time, amen, boo-hooing when we ought to be hooraying. Amen. And so was it the people of Jeremiah doing the same thing. But the message of verse of chapter 31 shifted from chapter 30 to chapter 31 because the message in 30 was revealing to them that they had uh, messed up with the covenant relationship of God. Amen. But in chapter 31, God decides, I'm going to give you, amen, restoration and I'm going to give you hope. And that's what we read in that 31 through 34 that God said, I'm, I'm going to give you a new covenant. Even though you done broke the one that I gave you. Even though you done messed up with the one uh, that I set up with your forefathers. Amen. I, I've decided that, that I'm going to give you a hope for end. Ain't that just like God? I mean, you know, even thinking about this, the scripture says in the New Testament, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So many times people are stuck on all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But, but they don't go on to say, well, say, but the gift of God. Somebody going to miss that. But the gift of God is eternal life. Even John 3, 16, uh, from 16 goes 17, that says God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That's good news right there. But through him, the world might be saved. But for them who believe not, that's 18, y'all, in the son of God, they're condemned already. And so I already see where I am in that, in that area because I'm a believer. And since I'm a believer, amen, I don't have to be worrying about condemnation because I've already accepted the salvation 
of God through his son Jesus Christ. And I believe if anybody ought to be having a pity party, it ought to be the people who don't know God. But we who know God ought to stop crying and start counting. Because you and I have so much. A matter of fact, when we start counting our blessings and naming them one by one, we run out of fingers to count. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. Ain't God good? And I know that's not good English. But ain't God good when you start really, really thinking about him and how good he is. And so God shifts them through Jeremiah and say, Jeremiah, go back and tell them. I, I know they all messed up, but go back and tell them that I'm going to give them a new covenant. Amen. That's the message uh, of comfort to the exiles so that they might know that God still had a plan for their lives. And brothers and sisters, what about you and I? When we come to Sunday school, we come to Bible study, we hear the word of God. Do you know that there are people who still have not returned to church? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But like you, I see them everywhere. They at Walmart. They at Chili's. They, they at Friday's. You know, eating big salads. They at the movie theaters. Come on, y'all. They, they at all of the venue places. I, I even seen some the other day at Jack's Zodicoin. Zoddy coin, but then on Sunday, can't go to church. Like COVID then took residence only at the church. I wish somebody helped me here. A amen, amen. I'm speaking to us. I'm speaking to those on our social media. You need to really think about it. If you're still sitting at home, sobering and crying, and God has allowed you to be a part of the exile, he's allowed you to be a part of the remnant who is still here. I had COVID twice, amen. Matter of fact, I'm a COVID chaser. My company... Amen. Sprays homes and businesses uh, that's been exposed to COVID. And yet, here I am preaching to you, huh? Amen. I don't have a mask on. I'm good, y'all. I had all my shots, but the shot I take every day is a faith shot. I wish somebody hear me. Amen. Without COVID, we still don't know when we walk out the door, when we return back home, when we leave our wives and children. We don't know if we're going to make it back or if they're going to make it back. The only thing, the only way you and I make it back to the house in one piece is by the grace of God. Yes. The traffic was bad. Yes. Folk don't know how to drive when it's raining in Houston. Yes. Folk driving crazy and texting and talking and doing all kinds of crazy stuff on their phone. But you at the house. Stop crying. You done made it out, made it back. When you walk in that door, you ought to holy, well, holy dance your way into the, into the house from your, from your garage. Talk back to me, somebody. Amen. You make it back from school on the school bus. You make it back from the schoolhouse. Amen. Where people are lurking around the school campus and praying on our children and children. If you make it back home, when you get in that door, you ought to fall on your brother's and sister's neck and say, girl, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Mama, daddy, good to see you. We have nothing to cry about, but we have so many blessings to count. Can I get a witness? So how do we shift ourselves from crying to counting. Yeah, how, how do we do that? James tells us that. James tells us, hey amen, we got we to gotta reposition ourselves. You, you know, sometimes sometime folk, uh, believers, give God their hand. Oh, yeah, you already walking with me. But they don't give God their heart. Uh, Sometimes we give God uh, our house, but we don't give him our home. Amen. Sometimes we'll give God one scenario going on in the house, 
But you got to learn how to give your whole family to God. Yeah. Amen. I never shall forget several times when my mother, uh, uh, thank God bless her, uh, was able to really uh, learn who were the prayer warriors in our home church. Yeah. Amen. Because she had been sitting in church with so many phony fake folk. And phony fake folk will give you bad advice. And I was a troubled child. I was a troubled teenager. Creating all kinds of problems for my mama, for my house, for the church, for the neighborhood, for the community. All that kind of stuff. Y'all just, just go ahead and write me off. Amen, flowers. But God didn't write me off. And now with folk in church telling my mama, get rid of that boy. That boy ain't going to do you no good. He's going to cause some pains in your house. And because uh, they, they saw my mama crying in church. And, and every Sunday or uh, every other Sunday, I don't know how many Sundays, but my mama would be up in front of church just pouring out to the Lord and pouring out to the pastor. Amen. And look like to me, uh, as many times as she poured out, Brother Miles, look like somebody in church who would have loved her enough who had their own experiences with their own children and saw the power of God working in their own house, looked like they could have went to my mama and say, listen, I had two like him. I wish somebody helped me here. And they looked like somebody in the fold, in the family, uh, should have been a witness to say to my mama, don't give up on your child but nobody did for many years but thank God for a couple of senior ladies in the church who pulled my mama to the side and say first of all uh, from now on when you come to church don't sit with them helpers because they don't mean you no good because nobody saved anybody saved ought never tell you to get rid of your children Help me somebody. They ought to be giving you some positive advice. Can I get a witness? And so she repositioned my mother for her worship. Amen. 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 And so from there out, my mother got better advice uh, from a couple of the senior old ladies in the church. And they say, you got you to gotta change your attitude. You, you come in with your baggage. Like you trying to tell God what he don't already know. <laughs> Told my mama, you, you giving too much free advertisement to the devil. Right. Bringing the devil's situation to the altar. And told my mother, you got to shift, amen, your, your understanding. That when you come to worship, you also come for a washing. I wish somebody hear me. Amen. When you come to worship. You, you got to be like the clothes that we used to put in the old washing machines. I say old washing machine. Old washing machines had an agitator. Come on, somebody. Hey Amen. These new washing machines, they got these little pump things, you know. And some of them don't have nothing in them. Amen. You just throw a part in it and, and you get your stuff out and they come back out. They come out dirty still. Amen. But the old washing machine, anybody, anybody remember that old Betty Belly, that big belly machine that had the roller on the top of it? You pull the clothes out and stick them in and ring my These children don't know nothing about that. Amen. They want to put two garments in a whole load. I wish I had a witness here. Waste and water. Mama say, you better wait till we get a full load before you wash your stuff. Amen. This woman told mama, you got to learn how to yield yourself in worship. So while God is washing you, he's agitating you. He's, he's breaking some stuff off for you. I, I wish I had some church folk in here. Every now and then you got to let God in worship get hold of you. Amen. It's all right to cry the right cry. But you ought not be crying the wrong cry. If you know who God is. Can I get a witness? And so James tells us. If we're going. Amen. To shift from uh, crying. To counting. He tells us something. Y'all read it. Y'all read it along with me. James said. You got to start counting it. All. 
Come on, somebody. Counted it all joy. You, you, you got to position yourself to say, uh, Lord, what is this lesson about? You, you got to know that, that, that in every, amen, uh, round of life, God has to send some rain. Can I get a witness? He, he has to permit some things to come in. You know, everybody want to be blessed, but nobody want to be tested. A amen. If I ask how many folk in here want a blessing from God, you, you probably put both hands up and your feet. Because we want a blessing. But we got to know God has to send us a testing, you know, because many of us really can't handle the blessings that God want to put upon us. He said, I can bless you uh, if you learn how to be obedient in tithing and giving. I'll bless you so you won't have room enough to receive. You, a lot of folk don't believe that. But, but God can bless you so much you won't have no room to put it. You'll be looking for a place. Huh? I know he could do it. He did it for uh, a team of guys. Jesus did it for a team of guys who went fishing and caught nothing. But then Jesus used it as a moment of a testing and a learning and then told him, lunch back out. Anybody remember that? And they launched back out and Jesus said, now nah, throw your net on this side. They were fishermen. They had been fishing all night, uh, but they didn't have the fishman on the boat. Amen. This time they have the one on the boat who created the fish, who created the sea. I wish somebody get that. And Jesus said, cast your net on this side. And when they cast it on this side, they couldn't even pull in the net. They had to call for other boats. To come and help them bring it in. I'm trying to help somebody here. God can bless you so. That you got to call your neighbor. Anybody remember when we were. Amen. Really poor. We had more. And we could call the neighbor next door. And say listen. Girl I got too much sugar. I got two loaves of bread. Come get one of these loaves of bread. Matter of fact we would fix a bag. And cross it over the fence. Help me somebody. Now we go make groceries late at night. When our neighbors don't see we coming in from the grocery store. Because we don't want to get nobody nothing. We want to press our garage, go out, get groceries, come back, press our garage and go in and say, I'm blessed. I'm minding my own business. Amen. Then don't know your neighbor don't have nothing to eat. That's a whole nother sermon. Amen. But we are blessed. And Jer uh, James says that, that if you, you really want to count your blessings, amen, you, you got to you, you, if, if, you gotta, you gotta shift yourself. You, you got to change. First of all, you got to have an attitude adjustment. Amen. Amen. So many times folk don't understand that coming to church it's about shifting yourself because too many times during the week, amen, we get, we get out of sync with God because circumstances of life, kind of like your car. Every now and then uh, because of the streets in Houston, you got to go get another alignment. Can I get a witness? You, you, you got to get an alignment so that, that your wheels and your stern wheel can make the same moves. And too many times, brothers and sisters, our will is not lined up with his will. And coming to church, coming to Bible study, coming to Sunday school is when you're coming to get an alignment. Preach, Reverend Silverman. Amen. That sounds good, don't it? When I come to church, I get an alignment. This morning, uh, uh, Brother Miles was teaching the Sunday school lesson. Amen. And there are some rich nuggets for the believer to come to get. But listen, the blessings that God has for you, he's not going to always put them at your door. Amen. So, so you got to come out that door if you want your blessings. And James says we got to have an attitude adjustment. He says it right there. Attitude in your tries. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you, because you're going to, when you meet trials of various kind. He didn't say if. He says when. And so you and I must make the adjustment to understand that there will be some trials. 
Talk back to me. Amen. And so you and I must make that adjustment so that God can adjust our attitudes. He say, count it joy. What, what's, this, what's this lesson about, Lord? What is it you want me to see? What are you saying? Because sometimes God say, look, don't say nothing. Just look. Some other time God say, listen, don't say nothing. And you know, you can't hear 100% when you're talking. Sometimes God want us to speak. Another time, God want us to just listen. I never shall forget, I don't know how folk are now, but when our mothers and parents and fathers used to be reprimanding us, we couldn't say, I, I, the, you, you know, when they were talking to us and telling us that we, we couldn't open our mouth and, and try to say something. And, and they'll look at it and say, you finna say something? And say, no, mama, I was just clearing my throat. My mother was a disciplinary, as y'all could hear. Amen. And we, and matter of fact, uh, when they got through reprimanding us, I'm speaking to your children, when they got through telling us something, they watched our body language. You know, all that neck stuff, all that hair stuff, and all that. See, somebody just got a flashback. When I did that popping your mouth and going talking about you going to your room and then go to your room that you think is your room and slam the door. Oh, no. Oh, no. Matter of fact, my mama was with, I thought she should have been on the movie The Matrix because whenever we had an attitude, my mama would already be in the room when I just left her in the living room. I was like, Mama, how you how you did that? I was like, what, what did you say? I said, Mama, I ain't saying nothing. I was, I was praying. I was talking to Jesus. Because I, you, yeah, yeah. somebody in here old enough to remember when Mama and Daddy and Grandmama and Uncle and Aunt would say, go, go outside and get me a good switch. <laughs> they wanted us to go get the switch that they were going to whip us with. Like that made sense. I would go and get the driest, the baddest, the worst piece of stick and she'd say okay just for that she'd come back out come back with a tree limb <laughs> beat me after death but I learned my lessons I said I learned my lessons and children when you learn your lessons at home you'll never need a policeman to beat you upside the head when you learn to say yes sir and no sir and yes ma'am and no ma'am. When you learn to respect your elders. Everybody in the neighborhood had a right that was adults to tell us right from wrong. Preach somebody. and Talk to me somebody. James say we got to make some attitude adjustment. And then he says, not only if you want to count your blessings and stop crying, you got to make attitude adjustments or allow God to make attitude adjustments. But you got to have advantage gauges. You, you, you got you, you, you to gotta see, amen. He said, and, 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 and right, he said, for know that uh, the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And then he said, and let steadfastness has its full effect. Oh, that's some good stuff right there. You, you, you got to let the word of God stand up in you. You got you to gotta learn, amen, to lean on God before the storm, before the trials. The trials are coming because they're designed to make you strong. They're designed to make you the better and not the bitter. And so many times people who go through things in life, they get bitter instead of getting better. You want to know uh, what's wrong with these people who think that they ought to shoot up places? It's because they're bitter. They've allowed too much bitterness to cloud their mental capacity. And sooner or later, because they do not have the foundation of God's word in their life, they snap. I wish I had somebody praying. So many people are doing so many things in the world. And it's because they don't know 
the word of God. And they don't know the God of the word. Not only does he encourage us uh, to have an attitude adjustment, but he also encourages us to have a gauge for our advantage so that we might be able to gauge ourselves. There are just some things, brothers and sisters, amen, uh, you ought to become immune to some things. Amen. Matter of fact, Paul says that you and I need to learn to shun the very presence of evil. You, you ought to see it before it comes. You ought to hear it before it's heard. Talk back to me. You ought to feel it before it touches you. You ought to, I think it was uh, 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 the country western singer uh, uh, Willie uh, Willie Nelson say, you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away. You got to know when to run. You got to know when to hide. And, and it doesn't mean that you're scared. You just don't need to be in some, uh, 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 some situations with the devil. If he want to fight, let him fight by himself. Can I get a witness? My mama used to have a sign up in the house. Uh, I don't know where she got it from, and I don't even know why she put it in the house. Uh, but she had it in the house, and they say, if you argue with a fool, what that make you? <laughs> My mama had that in the house a long time. I don't know who gave that to her, but guess what? It make good sense. Amen. Especially after they done proven to you who they are. You are responsible for you. But you and I are not responsible for others. And the last thing James tells us is that uh, we need to look for assistance and availability. In this first chapter, he tells us that we ought to look to God when we need God. He says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it liberally can I get a witness and upbraid it not he gives to every one of us just what we need if we learn to ask and I want to quickly tell you brothers and sisters it's important for us if we are going to desire to move from crying to counting you and I must learn as James has given us to know that God is prepared. If there's anybody that can counsel his own children, it is God himself. You and I must learn, brothers and sisters, that if we're going to start counting our blessings for them to be joys of trials, we must remember that we have a covering. Your covenant relationship with the Lord God is through his son, Jesus Christ. And I don't know about anybody in here this morning, but I want to tell God, thank you, Lord, that I have a relationship. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I can report in November 23 that I'm a child of God. And I don't apologize to anybody about being a Christian. And I thank God for saving my life and giving me another chance. And I want to thank God that in the midst of a world that has went crazy, that I still got some sense and I can still figure out what side of the road I want to be on. Is there anybody up in here want to tell God, for you I live and for you I die? Is there anybody up in here want their neighbors to the left and to the right I want them to know this is not just any house on the street that I live on but this house I live in is a home that welcomes God 
This house I live in is a home that welcomes the Holy Spirit. This home that I live in is a home that reverence God's word. Can I get a witness? The joy of the Lord ought to be demonstrated in every believer's life. Your yard ought to tell somebody that you believe God. Your driveway ought to be a reverence that your home is a blessed home. Can I get a witness? Somebody asked me the other day, why don't you have any decorations on your house for Halloween? And I quickly told them, I don't celebrate Halloween, but if you stand here long enough, I'll throw up a hallelujah and praise his name. Halloween don't reflect God. Halloween don't reflect Jesus. Halloween don't reflect the Holy Spirit. I'm glad. I said I'm glad. Anybody up in here want to count your blessings? You ain't got to start in 1962. You can start in 2023. Had not God been good to you in January, did he bless you? February, did he bless you? You ought to have some residue on your life that tells somebody that you are a child of God. Can you say yeah? They ought to know in your walk at the job that you're not overconfident but you walk in his grace and in his mercy. Can I get a witness? Ain't God good? Anybody up in here count your blessings? Won't he make a way out of nowhere at all? Ain't God good? Say yeah. When I think about his goodness that I have a covenant relationship with God and nobody can break my covenant relationship. Nobody can turn God against me. Not even my own shortcomings. I'm glad that I got a working relationship with the Lord. And then I want to count my blessings. God been faithful to me. Anybody here? Want to count it, uh, the faithfulness of God. Uh, new mercies uh, every morning. Uh, just this morning, uh, he woke me up uh, and started me on my way. Uh, he not only woke me up, uh, but he got me up. Uh, I sat on the side of the bed. Uh, I was able to dress myself. Uh, just this morning, uh, I just sat uh, three days uh, with my play mama uh, who's 89 years old uh, and she had a stroke uh, but God has given her the ability that she can start walking again uh, she can go to the bathroom uh, on her own uh, go to the kitchen uh, and fix herself a sandwich uh, count your blessings uh, one by one uh, had he been good to you did he wake you up early this morning did he let you uh, tie your own shoes, uh, put your own clothes on? Uh, then you were able uh, to get in the car, uh, choose what car you want to drive in the church. Uh, ain't God good? Uh, count your blessing. Uh, when you get out of church, uh, you can go somewhere uh, and feed yourself. Uh, when you get out of church, uh, ain't God good? Uh, say yeah. Let me count my blessing uh, one more time. Uh, Jesus, uh, my Lord uh, and my Savior, uh, one day uh, went to Calvary. And at Calvary, he died at Calvary. He gave up his hands uh, at Calvary. He let them stretch him out a while, hung him high, dropped him low uh, at 
Calvary. He took on my sins, purchased my sins by shedding his blood at Calvary. He died in my stead at Calvary. He gave up the ghost, was put in a borrowed tomb. And early, I said early, I said early, on the third day morning, he was raised with all power in his hand. I'm certainly glad uh, that I know what side uh, of Calvary to stand on. There were some folk uh, standing on Jesus' left, uh, but there were some folk uh, standing on his right. Uh, is there anybody up in here standing on the right side uh, of Calvary? He ain't dead no more. He was raised from the dead. We serve a risen Savior who was once dead but is alive forevermore. And one of these days, I'm counting my blessings up because he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Ain't he good? Say yeah, ain't he kind? Say yeah, don't fool me. Do you know him? Say yeah, ain't he all right? I know he's all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for a covenant relationship. I don't have to keep crying about spilled milk. I don't have to keep crying about trials and tribulations and circumstances that has happened. I made it through. I'm making it through. And if you're here today or you're on our live stream, you find yourself locked in the house, locked in your circumstances, locked in your own feelings, I suggest you move from your feelings and move to your faith because without faith it's impossible to please God maybe you've never confessed Jesus to be your savior and lord November 2nd Sunday is a good Sunday to get right with the Lord and all you have to do is pray the sinner's prayer and acknowledge believe acknowledge and confess Jesus as the son of God and that God sent his son to be a ransom for your sins if you believe that and confess that and welcome him into your heart the Bible says thou shalt be saved our invitation is extended to you now Jesus, would you come my choice is that one? Would you come? Yes. Some folks. Some folks. Would rather. Oh, yes. Have how there. Oh, Lord. Land. Some folks. Some folks. Choose silver. Oh, yes. And gold. Oh, yes. That they treasure mm -hmm. and forget about their soul. I decided, I decided to make Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, my choice. Well, you know the road. The road is rough And the going gets tough Oh yes And the hills are Hard, hard to, to climb. climb Yes But I started up Oh yes I did A long time ago oh, And there is no doubt In, in my, my mind In my mind My mind It's hard Oh yes To make Jesus Oh Lord oh, 
Would you come? Would you come? Oh, you know the road is rough. Oh, yes, it is. And the going gets tough. Oh, yes, it does. And the hills are hard to climb. Well, I started out oh, yes, it a long time ago. Oh, yes, oh, yes. And there is no doubt in, in my, my mind. mind. And all the people of God said amen. Say amen. If you've made that decision and you need some counsel from this church, those of you who are on our live stream, you're welcome to call this church and speak with the pastor and the counselors of this church who will be glad to minister with you. All you have to do is you can go online or you can look us up here at New Beginnings Church and we would be glad to minister with you and even arrange a visitation in person to minister with you. We're certainly grateful to God for his Holy Spirit and his presence to speak to us this morning. You have to choose to stop crying and start counting. Your blessings are all around you. The goodness of God is all around us. The mercies of God is all around us. The kindness of God, the love of God, the actions of God, the attributes of God, they're all around us. And they're all around us to bless us, to bless us and then bless somebody through us that somebody might come to know God in a real way. And you ought to be grateful to desire to be a conduit to be connected with God so that he not only blesses you but he can send blessings through you to somebody else. I was to extend and yours to accept. 